When you think of ancient Earth, what's the first thing that pops into your head? For most of us, it's probably the towering T-Rex or the long-necked Brachiosaurus, right? I yes, sir, yes, sir. Dinosaurs have captured our imaginations for generations. But have you ever wondered what our planet was like asterisk before asterisk these magnificent creatures roamed the land? What kind of life existed in the vast expanse of time leading up to the age of dinosaurs? Let's rewind the clock, way past the Jurassic period, to uncover the incredible and sometimes bizarre story of life before the dinos. Before we can even talk about animals, we have to go back to the very beginning. For billions of years, Earth was a quiet place, home only to single-celled organisms like bacteria. But around 541 million years ago, something extraordinary happened. It's called the Cambrian Explosion. It wasn't a literal explosion, but an explosion of life. Suddenly, the oceans were teeming with complex, multicellular creatures. This is where things get really weird and wonderful. Imagine diving into the Cambrian Seas. You wouldn't see fish as we know them. Instead, you'd encounter creatures straight out of a sci-fi movie. Meet Anomalocaris, the abnormal shrimp. This was one of the top predators of its time, growing up to a meter long. It had two large spiky appendages for grabbing prey and a circular mouth that looked like a pineapple slice lined with sharp plates. Then there was Hallucigenia, a tiny, spiky, worm-like creature that walked on stilt-like legs. For a long time, scientists couldn't even figure out which end was its head. And let's not forget the trilobites. These armored arthropods were everywhere, scuttling along the seafloor. They were so successful that they survived for nearly 300 million years. After the Cambrian period came the Ordovician and Silurian periods. The oceans continued to diversify. This is when the first true vertebrates, our very distant ancestors, appeared. These were jawless fish, like Astraspis, covered in bony plates for protection. They were small and probably not the best swimmers, but they were a crucial step in our own evolutionary story. It was also during the Silurian period that life made its first brave move onto land. Not animals, but plants. Simple. Moss-like plants began to colonize the barren rocky continents, paving the way for everything that would follow. Next up, the Devonian period, often called the Age of Fishes. The oceans became dominated by a stunning variety of fish. We had the giant armored fish, Dunkleosteus, a terrifying predator with a head covered in bony plates and jaws that could snap with incredible force. That's but the biggest leap forward happened in the shallow waters. A group of fish called lobefin fish started to develop something amazing, strong. Bony fins that they could use to prop themselves up on the muddy bottom. One of these fish, Tiktaalik, had fins with a bone structure remarkably similar to our own arms and legs. It had a flattened skull and eyes on top of its head, perfect for peeking out of the water. This incredible creature represents the critical transition from fish to the first four-legged land animals, the tetrapids. The Carboniferous period followed, and this is when life on land truly took off. The early plants had evolved into vast, swampy forests of giant ferns and scale trees that towered over 100 feet tall. All this plant life pumped massive amounts of oxygen into the atmosphere, allowing land animals to grow to enormous sizes. This was the age of giant insects. Imagine dragonflies, like Meganeura, with wingspans of over two feet, or Arthropleura, a millipede-like creature that could grow up to eight feet long. Early amphibians, descendants of creatures like Tiktaalik, thrived in these swamps, but they still needed to return to the water to lay their eggs. Finally, we arrive at the Permian period, the last chapter before the dinosaurs. The continents were merging to form the supercontinent Pangaea. The climate became drier, and new types of animals evolved that were better suited to life away from the water. These were the first reptiles. They had scaly skin to prevent water loss, and most importantly, they laid amniotic eggs with a protective shell. This was a revolutionary invention. For the first time, animals could reproduce entirely on land. The dominant land animals of this time were not dinosaurs, but a group called synapsids. You might know them by another name, mammal-like reptiles. Creatures like the famous Dimetrodon, with its incredible sail-like fin on its back, ruled the Permian landscape. Dimetrodon wasn't a dinosaur. It was actually more closely related to us, to mammals, than it was to any dinosaur. So what happened to this rich and diverse world? 
The Permian period ended with the most catastrophic event in Earth. History. The Great Dying. A massive extinction event wiped out over 90% of all marine species and 70% of land species. The exact cause is still debated but is likely linked to massive volcanic eruptions in Siberia. It was a planetary reset. This devastation cleared the slate, leaving ecological niches wide open. And into that empty world, a new group of reptiles began to rise, evolving and diversifying. These were the survivors who would go on to inherit the Earth, giving rise to the incredible age of dinosaurs. So, the next time you picture ancient Earth, remember that the story is so much bigger than just dinosaurs. It's a saga of strange sea monsters, giant insects, and sail-backed proto-mammals that lived, thrived, and ultimately paved the way for the world we know. The history of our planet is filled with more incredible wonders than we can possibly imagine. Thanks so much for joining me on this journey back in time. You enjoyed this video and want to explore more amazing stories from our planet's past? Please hit that like button and be sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you don't miss our next adventure. See you next time.